morning and happy Sabbath again, everyone. Good morning to all the Lord, I love you people in the house today. Amen, amen. And we would like to welcome those who are viewing us by stream. We pray that you will have a wonderful Sabbath experience wherever you are today. And the same spirit that permeates this building will reach out and touch you wherever you are. And as we begin our services today, we'd like to begin as we normally do by introducing those who are visiting with us for the first time. And if this is your first time worshiping at Mount Olive, we want you to just wave your, raise your hand. If this is your first time worshiping here at Mount Olive, won't you just hold your hands up so we can come and um, we'd like to know who you are and where you're visiting with us from. Well, I see some hands over here to my, to my left. Just stand right up. Yes, yes. The mic is coming. Hold, wait for the mic. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. I'm standing up for my mom. She's visiting from New York. First time here. And Amen. her name is Louisa. Hello. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I see another hand right there in front here. Just stand up again and introduce yourself to us. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Madeline. I'm from Kissimmee. Oh, your voice is so light. <laughs> I have to speak up a little bit because so I, I didn't hear you. My name is Madeline. I'm from Kissimmee. From Kissimmee? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Glad to have you with us, Adam. <laughs> Are there any others? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Stand right up. Yes. I know this is Sister Bettencourt. Go right ahead. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Yes. I am visiting. Well, I'm actually, I forgot that I live here now. Uh, I, um, came to visit my daughter mm -hmm. and I realized I needed help and so I decided to retire and I now live with her and I thank God every day for my three children. Amen. This is my son David and my um daughter her daughter has been through her job she's done very good work that she's got a, she won a trip to Spain so I thank God for every, I thank God every day Amen Right, I see another hand. I see another hand in the back. Yes, I see a little hand. Yes. Okay. All right, go right ahead. Speak up right there. That's good. Mm -hmm. My my name is Asher. And I live in Whole Life Church. All right. This is your first time here? Yes. Who did you bring with you? My mom. Where's your mom? Right there. Ask her to stand. <laughs> Ask your mom to stand so we can see your mom. All right. All right. We're glad to have you here. Amen. Who drove this morning? Amen. Do we have any others? Any other first time? This is your first time worshiping here at Mount Olive. Amen. And you know, at Mount Olive, we have this, this trend, uh, tradition that visitors become members. And so um, all of you who are visiting today, especially those who live in the area, we want to welcome you home to Mount Olive. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Um, you can let them in.
And as we normally do here every Sabbath, you know, many times we don't greet each other during the week. We don't. Sometimes we get so caught up and so busy with life and jobs and what have you. Um, so in church, we should come and all your burdens should be left way out on the street, not even in the parking lot. But when you come to church, you come to lift up the name of Jesus. You come to be blessed. And so at this time, we're going to ask you to do something. Greet somebody that you haven't seen this week. The musician is going to give us some good greeting, some handshaking music. You may want to even hug or give a holy kiss because you haven't seen each other. Find someone that you haven't seen and give them a good happy Sabbath. And if, if they, don't, they don't have a smile, give them one of your smiles. Because a smile is a frown, sir, and turned upside down. God bless you. Greet somebody in Jesus' name. here for those online who don't believe in God I have something for you this past Monday there was an eclipse NASA couldn't produce this no scientist on earth could produce this it, it you know in some areas you know it went so dark that even the animals were confused and it went dark and then it became light again only God can do that. So if you don't believe in God, that the heavens are telling the wonders of the, of the Lord and the wonder working, the wonderful workings of our Lord and how God is displaying it, something's wrong with you. So I'm not talking to anybody here because I know everybody here believe in the Lord, but there may be somebody online who's bought into the theory that there's a big bang or some, something of that nature that brought about this earth. God created this world. And the good news is the same way God controlled that eclipse, God is controlling things in this world. And he's going to take care of his people. I would like to also give congratulations to Sister Courtney and her team. Where's Courtney? Yes, last week, Children's Day. Yes, it's our powerhouse leader. 
and the last week she, the children was on display. We had them reading the text and um, we had them taking up the offering and all of those things. And one came to me and said, Pastor, I'm going to preach. I said, okay, now wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. You, you, you got to hold up, hold up just a minute. I'm not ready yet. But uh, he says, oh yeah, I'm preaching. So I says, okay, well, we're going to put you a pool pit outside there somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we want you to continue to pray for our sick and shunning members. As a matter of fact, um, last Sabbath, our own Elder Brennan passed. Um, his service is going to be held here at 1 o'clock on the 28th. I want you to keep the Brennan family in your prayers. Um, Elder Brennan used to sit uh, on my to my left. He was a stately gentleman, tall gentleman. We come in, and uh, he went on Thursday for last up two up two weeks ago for a funeral himself. And um, on Sabbath morning, last Sabbath he passed. So please keep Sister Brendan and the family in your prayers. Amen. Um, next Sabbath at uh, six o'clock, elders, we're going to ask you to meet with us. And all board members get prepared for board meeting on the 21st at 10 a.m. On the 27th, uh, there are two things happening. Uh, Elder Reeves, Dr. Reeves Memorial Service will be held at Patmos at um, uh, 3 o'clock. But there will also be a town hall meeting for Southeastern Conference at, that evening at 6 o'clock at the North Orlando Church. So we're going to ask you to please bear those announcements in mind. And today at 6 o'clock... We're going to ask all Pathfinder staff, parents, to meet with us here at 6 o'clock. Um, we, we have some updates, and we need to hear some things, and we need to talk over some things. So at 6 o'clock, all Pathfinder staff and parents that's going to Gillette, Wyoming, we need to see you today here at, um, at church at 6 o'clock. This past Wednesday night, we had a wonderful prayer meeting. We had a good time. You know, we've been having some good times in prayer meeting. Those of you that haven't linked, haven't zoomed in, you've been missing something. And uh, it's not just enough to come to church on Sabbath and get that Sabbath fix. Because before you leave the parking lot, if you're not careful, it'll be gone. It's good to have, it's like eating once a week. If you want the Lord to do something, you have to as, spend time with God. So we invite you to come with us. We're going through the great controversy. And maybe, I think the North American Division heard that we are doing the great controversy in Mount Olive. And so they decided to make the Sabbath school lesson the great controversy. So you're getting a double dose. So we're ahead of the game here. So this coming uh, uh, Wednesday night, the Zoom link is on the screen. Those of you would like to take your phones out and take a, uh, a, a shot of it, you can join us at 7.30 um, for the controversy ended. We're going to deal with that, chapter 42 in the great controversy. You don't need a workbook, just read the chapter. As a matter of fact, when I was in school, Pastor Cox, remember we had to buy all of Ellen White's books? We had to get the DVD and all those things. But now it's free. It's all free. And all you have to do is get the app. And from the app, you can search and do all kinds of things. And, and, and it's, it's a wonderful technology that God has made available to us. So we encourage you to, if you don't have the book, you can go online and you can read along with us. Amen. Now, as we prepare for service today, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, I'm looking for a miracle. If that's the wrong one, look at the other one and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I've come to the house of the Lord and I'm expecting a miracle because God is in the miracle working business. Amen. He works miracles. Do I have any miracles in the house today? As a matter of fact, everybody should be praising God and putting their hands together because you are a miracle. Just waking up this morning is a miracle. Just being able to put one foot in front of the other one is a miracle. Just being able to take a breath is a miracle. Even if you got a little pain, pain tells you that you're still alive. That's what it does. So that's why we're here to give God the praise, the honor, and glory. And I don't know about you. I don't know what you come to do. But see, I'm from Alabama, 
And every now and then, when the music is right, and the word is right, and the spirit is right, I raise my hand and I stand up, and I don't worry about those folk next to me because they don't know my story. They don't know what the Lord has done for me. So don't be embarrassed and so be so sophisticated. As some of you said, so stush, uh, that you can't understand that the miracles of God you know, like what David said, David said, I will enter into his gates with what? And into his courts with? I'm going to bless the Lord and give honor to him. For the Lord is good. Anybody know God is good? The Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace. Yes. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church family. Good morning, happy Sabbath. It's so wonderful to be in the house of the Lord today on this gorgeous day that we have here in Florida. No rain, blue, sunshiny skies. I just love living in the sunshine state. I have quite a few announcements, but they're all very important, so please incline your ear. Uh, we have a trans second reading for a transfer of membership. We have... Maureen Moncrief and Orlando Moncrief going from Mount Olive to Mount Dora and Carla Owens to Restoration. Yes, what is your pleasure? Is that second? Those in favor, would you say aye? Those that are none opposed, amen. All right, you're Thank ready. you so much, Pastor Rear. 10 a.m. every Sabbath morning, what do we have? Sabbath school, exactly. This is our time for us to come together and review important lessons. And if you come at 10 a.m., usually you have to be to work at 8 a.m. So 10 a.m. should be a pretty good time on Sabbath morning to get here to worship with the Lord and learn more about him. Amen? Amen. And please bring your children as well. They absolutely love it. How many men do we have in the audience? Can you please raise your hand? Men? Boys? Young men? How many of you get stressed? Right? Exactly. Exactly. We do. Well, men of Mount Olive, <laughs> we have our next Vespers on Friday, April 19 at 7 p.m. That's next Friday, April 19. What day? April 19. If you can't remember it, it's just next Friday. Um, all men of Mount Olive are encouraged to attend. Dr. Brown is presenting a series on stress and anxiety in a man's world. Ooh, please do not miss out. We have enough room for everyone to come. How many of us like to eat? Yes, yes, it's fundamental that we eat. Well, we have food distribution coming this Wednesday at 10 a.m. Yes, same time as Sabbath school, 10 a.m. April 17th, which is on next Wednesday, Please come out, open up your trunks. There's more to give and um, to share with others as well. Um, how many of us like to eat fish? Oh, I love fried fish. Give me some escabeche every day. The Pathfinders will be having a fish fry, everyone. Fish fry and game night, April 27th at sunset. There will be tickets. Um, to reserve your fish, to make sure that you get your fish, and we will have more information coming from our Pathfinder leader, Elder Gyro Forbes, after I am done. 
All right, it's very important that we know our numbers. What am I talking about? I'm talking about your blood pressure, your top and your bottom number. Today, we are having blood pressure checks for everyone in the audience right out in the lobby area right after service. So if you would like to know your numbers, please um, join us for blood pressure checks immediately following service. All right, graduates of 2024, calling all kindergarten, eighth grade, 12th grade, college and university. We are having our Mount Olive Graduation Education Day on June 8th, but it's very important that you scan this QR code that is on the screen so that you can be included in the celebration ceremony. Um, you need to fill out the information and submit, attach your graduation picture. All of this is requested by April 27th at 11.59 p.m. No exceptions. Kindergarten, eighth grade, 12th grade, college and university. Please submit your picture as well as information. If you have any questions, please see Dr. Callender um, and you can email her at education at mountolivesda.org. Also coming up in the month of June, we have our camp meeting. It is June 17th to 22nd. Uh, the theme is Fill Us, Empowered by the Holy Spirit, Equipped for God's Love. And if you are in need of any medical assistance, we have our dear sister Michelle Ware. If you wouldn't mind raising your hand, she is our nurse on duty. If you are in need, she is over here. And our quote of the week. It's not a tragedy to have only one talent. The tragedy is not using it. God bless you all and have a wonderful Sabbath day. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning, happy Sabbath. So as was said earlier, the, the Pathfinder, we are making a strong push to get to Gillette. And we know that we have a lot of island folks in this church. And island people like fish. So we have having a fish fry so that we can get you guys money. Okay? Um, here, here's the plan. So the plan is this. For those that want their fish, we're asking you to reserve in advance. Because what we're trying to do, we're trying to get an idea of how many people want fish so that we can plan effectively so if you actually want the fish, we would like you to either reach out to myself or any one of the staff or leaders so that we can reserve and have your fish ready for a Saturday, which is the 27th of April. Now we're going to have games night. We're going to have some fun. So please come up with a pair. For those who are domino champions, bring, bring your skills. For those who, who think they are domino champion, bring your skills. Um, we're going to have... The plan is to have clean, healthy fun, but we also um, encouraging you to get our fish. Um, there's multiple ways that you can also reserve. Um, coming in probably next week, we're going to have a link so that you can um, give it to either Cash App or Zelle. Um, also, if you want to reserve it today, just let us know. We also can, can write your name down on our card so that we can have your fish prepared for the 27th. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to elevate you. And as we made this push for Gillette, we pray that our Pathfinder will come back even stronger and more determined to work for Jesus in the next coming, coming future. We have you on overload today, but it's okay. I come on behalf of the Women's Ministry Department, but this announcement is not just for females. We are trying to launch our mentor interest um, our mentorship program and so I have a mentor interest survey in my hand and I need five pathfinders any five of you to come up here there are only 12 questions and I would like for anyone who's interested in being a mentor here at Mount Olive to take a survey and answer the questions if you have children that you'd like to be mentored and you'd also like to mentor, please take a survey as well. Most of the questions are geared to the mentor, but there are some that are geared to the parents that would be involved. So I need you to come forward real quickly, and if you'd raise your hand so these nice young people will know who to give these surveys to, I would really appreciate your interest. Uh, we will be coming back to you.
with the results of the survey okay. at a later date. So I, as they're passing them out, I'd like to just read the questions that we have. Uh, it says, what is your level of interest in participating in a mentorship program? What are your primary mentoring objectives? And you have some options to choose from. What is your experience with mentoring? Check all that apply. If Mount Olive sponsored a mentoring program, which is the plan, what benefits would you like your mentee to receive from participation in such a program? Check all that apply. You can go ahead. I need to see your hands, though, if you're, if you're interested in mentoring our children, because our children are the future. Are they not? That's right. And, and God said, suffer the little children to come to me. Now, he's not here personally, but we are his advocates. And so I need to see those hands as I'm reading the rest of the questions. On average, how much time do um, would you expect to dedicate each month to mentoring activities? What is the best time of day to participate in mentoring activities? What is your preferred method of receiving information? And it has the options there. What grades? Would it be three grades thir third through fourth, fifth through sixth, seventh through eighth? And um, I don't have the rest of the questions, but if you have them in your hand, you will have them. And so I need to um, just know that we are fully engaged in raising our children. We are a village. You saw the blessing here this morning of those two lovely babies. You saw how many people were there. Um, and we are pledging to make sure that we are active participants in the raising of our children. Thank you so much. Amen. We have a lot going on in at Mount Olive. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to sing an opening song. This is the day that the Lord has made. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Rejoice and be glad in it. So let's raise that up this morning.
Happy Sabbath again. So our scripture reading is taken from, we're going to make a switch. It's going to be Revelation 18. I'm going to give the tech team a moment to, to help us out a little bit. Revelation 18, 1 to 4. Uh, we're making a switch. So it will no longer be exit, but Revelation. I will read the first. You will read the second. I'll read the third, and we will end on the fourth together. I'm reading. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. nation have drank drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchant of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury together I heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people lest you share her sin unless you receive her plague one of the, may the Lord add a rich blessing to this reading and the hearers of his word. One of the greatest miracle that God, God provided for us in the Bible is when he took those five loaves of bread and two fishes. So I was at camp early this morning with the young people and I decided I need to get back here to share this because I learned something at camp over the, over this past couple of days we had what is little in your hands when you place it in the master hands become great so I just want to encourage as we pray and if there's anything that you need God to break through, I want us to just come to the altar so that we can get a breakthrough. When we speak your name, something happens in the room. Our hands go up. time to be in your presence. Father, we recognize that this world is faced with chaos and trials day in and day out, but we serve a God who is all-powerful. You remind us in Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Father, I come before you right now asking you in the name of Jesus, the name that is above all name, that whatever the situation is in our lives, Heavenly Father, you are the chain breaker. You can break every chain. There's nothing that is impossible with you if we put everything in your hand. So I pray in the name of Jesus, Satan, whatever you have planned, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You have no authority in our lives because God has all victory. 
Father, we pray, oh Lord Jesus, for those that have, have taken the bold step to come forward, Heavenly Father. We know that you are a chain breaker, and we know that whatever we need, you will supply because you own everything. You have everything. And Lord, we, all we have to do is believe that you are capable of doing these. You say we must seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything that we need will be given unto us. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you would bind Satan, Heavenly Father, whatever he's planning this week or even right this moment, Heavenly Father. Some of us are in church and we are distracted because of the cares of this world. But I pray in the name of Jesus that those cares are no longer an issue because even right now you are working miracles in our lives. You are moving mountains. You are rooting up valleys, any Father. You are opening up the Red Sea. You are cleansing the fire. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you would break every chain, that you would remove Satan's foothold out of our home, remove Satan's foothold out of our marriage, remove Satan's foothold out of our jobs, remove Satan's foothold out of our health, remove Satan's foothold out of our home and our church, oh Lord Jesus, because we serve a God who can do the impossible if we only believe believe all things is possible. And Father, we pray for all of our sick and shut in right now. We pray for Dr. Rhonda, who's actually in the hospital right now. We pray, oh Lord, that you would touch her right now, that you would elevate her, whatever Satan is thinking that he has victory over, I pray, oh Lord, that you would cast it down, oh Lord Jesus. We pray in the special way also for the little ones that was, was blessed today. They were dedicated to you, oh Lord, I pray that you would even continue to cover them and continue to be with the parents, oh Lord, for we fight against, uh, we fight not against flesh and bl uh, blood, but we fight against principalities, oh Lord. So help us to remember, oh Lord, to put on the whole armor of God, oh Lord, because only when we have the whole armor of God that we'll be able to stand. Satan, you have no authority. Your days are numbered. 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 Days are numbered. We have victory and we claim in victory today because all things work for good for those who are called upon this purpose. We claim victory in the name of Jesus. So as we leave this pulpit, as we leave this platform, as we leave this altar today, as we leave this church today, we recognize that we serve a God that is all powerful and our problem is not too big that God cannot handle. So help us, O oh Lord, to trust you when we can't trace you. Help us to trust you when we don't even understand what is going on because you are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. You are the chain breaker and all things work together for our good. Father, we also pray in the name of Jesus for the speaker of the hour that you would touch him even now. Let the words that are proclaimed out of his mouth be words directly from your throne in Jesus' name. Amen. below um, it's time for your special moment you can collect a lot of money today and I'm come for your children's story
Good morning, boys and girls. Ooh, that sounds like a no breakfast. Good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. That sounds like at least you had some cereal. Good morning, boys and girls. Okay, you had your breakfast. Our story today is called Two Face Caroline. Two Face Caroline. Does anyone know what it means to be two-faced? Okay. I think it means to like have one side of you. Like at school, you have one side with your friends, and at home, you have a different side of you. Did you learn my story? That's exactly what we're going to talk about. Thank you, Kasadi. So, two-faced Caroline. Caroline was a beautiful little girl, and she, when she was at school, everybody loved her. The teacher loved her, people loved her, but when she got home, she was so mean to her mother. Yeah, 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 Riley. Mm -hmm. I know, I was, I was thinking the same thing. So... This went on for a while, and then one day, mom had an idea. Now, we live in Florida, we don't really have those homes here, but especially in the Northeast, there are homes where one stair comes down to the back in the kitchen, and the other stair goes to the front. So her mother was preparing dinner, and she told her to come down and set the table, because she was preparing dinner. And at first she was like, I don't see why I have to do that because it's not my friends and blah, 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 blah. So her mom was like, you need to come downstairs now and set the table. She knew as much as she did, whenever those words were said in that way, she knew that she had better come down. So she came down and she had a great idea in her mind. Instead of using a proper setting, she took plates from all over the place, she took forks from all over the place, and she put them in all kinds of different places. She was taught how to set a proper table. And she was clanging and stomping and shouting. She was talking loud enough because she wanted her mother to hear how displeased she was. So that went on for a while. So the food was ready and her mom said to her, go into the sitting room. Again, we don't have that much in Florida. We have the open concept. But in the Northeast, especially, you have a separate living room that's separated from the rest. She said, go in the sitting room and tell our guests that the dinner is ready. And she went in there with such an attitude. I don't know why I have to do this, blah, blah, blah. As soon as she broke around the corner, guess who was sitting in the sitting room? Her favorite teacher and her family. And she burst out into, you didn't tell me that they were here. You didn't tell me. <gasps> and she started to stop, run upstairs. Her mother said, come back down. She looked at the table and it was all set, mishmash. Used some of the old dishes, some of the new dishes. And it was a very quiet dinner. Her mother and the teacher talked. And she just kept sobbing and partially eating. Then she kept asking, may I be excused? No. And so eventually they got through dinner and her mother said, you know what, I will clear the table and you guys can wait for dessert. So it was just her and her teachers there. And she was like, you know, I didn't know it was you. I didn't know it was you. So her teacher said, is that the way you treat your mother? So you're just pretending to be nice because if you're nice, you treat who nice? You treat everybody nice. It's not just a matter of this person or that person. So she said, you're pretending to be nice. And her teacher, this was a Christian school, said, what does the Bible say with our parents? The, um, the seventh commandment, the fourth commandment was on the screen, but what does it say, the fifth commandment say? Go ahead, Riley. Come over here so people can hear you. Mother and father. 
honor your mother and your father so that your days may be long. So that was two-faced Caroline. But boys and girls, many of us do that, right? Even sometimes the bigger boys and girls. They treat one person one way and one person the other way. But Jesus also said in the Bible, he said, be sure your sins will find you out. So if you decide that you're going to be two-faced, meaning you're going to treat some people one way and some people the other way, Jesus doesn't love that. And he will make sure that everyone knows that you are faking because he wants us to love each other, everybody. Our mommies, our daddies, our brothers and sisters, our teachers, we're supposed to love everybody. So we should be loving and kind to everybody at all times. So, our pledge this week, it's also in the Iowa Sabbath School lesson, is that people can see Jesus in us. Because does anyone know the last commandment that Jesus gave to his disciples? He said, love each other as I have loved you. And that's what Jesus expects even little boys and girls to do. To love everyone and treat them with kindness and respect. Now, I'm going to ask, is that Rebecca? Yeah. No, it's not. I'm going to ask you anyway. You, I thought you were, but you're not. What's your name, sweetie? Alex. And what's your last name? Okay, I was calling your mom's name. <laughs> Alex hasn't been with us for a while, so I'm going to have her pray for us today. Thank you. Jesus, thank you for this day. Help us to have a good day. Sabbath today and a good rest of the week. In Jesus' name, amen. Good to see you. You'd like to pray? Come on. No. What's your name, sweetie? Elisa. Elisa. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day and please make tomorrow a wonderful day too. Thank you for sending us to church. Thank you for sending us to church safely and please send us back home safely. Please put everyone inside your mighty hands and bless them. Please protect them from anything dangerous happening and break the chains of the devil. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. I knew we needed that word. Sabbath, everybody. Give the children uh, that story a round of applause, and our children a big round of applause. That was great. Amen. 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 How many are you happy to be in the house of God today? Oh, man. I'm so happy for the 10 of you that responded. It feels so good inside. I'm, I'm going to ask the other people now. No, I don't want the 10 to say anything. How many of you? The rest of you are happy to be in the house of God today. Amen. Amen. How many of you made a promise before? You made a promise. You wanted to keep it. But something happened. You know? How many of you made a promise, but you kept that promise? Raise your hand. One, two, three. I can actually count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven people made a promise and you kept the promise. Well, that's good. Thank God for your honesty. Well, somebody made a promise. He said, if you would give to me, you return to me. I'm going to pour out the windows. I will open up the windows of heaven, pour out so many blessings that you will not have room enough to receive all of the blessings that I will give to you. I only ask for you to trust me we serve a mighty God I said we serve a mighty God anybody ever been sick and got healed let me see all those miracles 
Yeah, I see you, bro. I see you. Yes, yes. Amen. Look at the hands. If you want to see. So what he asked for us to do is to return 10% that he's already given to you. He says, I just want to see. I'm going to give this to you. I want to see if you trust me. If you trust me enough that I will continue to bless you like I already have. Like, for instance, your heart beating this morning and you woke up kind of clothed in your right mind, able to come to church without accident or incident, sitting here by God's grace. The news reports that we saw this week, you were not in them, but you are in the house of God, alive and well. We serve a mighty God. So today, we're going to return 10% to the Lord, and we're going to trust him that he's going to do for us exceedingly and abundantly above what we could ever ask or think. Let's pray, but we're going to ask for those who are going to receive this morning's tithe and offering from us. Amen. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for today. Already for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. And Lord, we claim the promises of your holy word, for your word is sure. Your promises are sure. You're not a man that you would lie. So Lord, if you said it, it will come to pass. So Lord, we thank you for those who could give. Those who cannot give, dear Lord, we praise you for them and we ask for you to bless them. So Lord, take our feeble gifts, dear Lord, and we ask that you would multiply it so that it will strengthen your word, your work in this part of the vineyard. And we ask, dear Lord, that you would be with each and every family under the sound of my voice. Help us, dear God, to be saved when you come back. We claim these things. It's in the powerful name of Jesus that we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 God has done so many great things for us. Do I have any people to witness and testify? He's done some great things for us. Every time I turn around, he keeps blessing me. So we're going to proclaim and declare how great our God is this morning. As you collect your tithes and offerings, once the basket has passed you, you can stand up on your feet and pray with us.
great is our God. You know, Elder Rodney, he came up and he said, you can return 10%. Well, after that, you can return another 10% just for the offering. Amen, 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 amen. Today, it is my privilege to introduce a friend of mine. He has been to Mount Olive a few times. We have a tradition going on here. Uh, Pastor William Cox, he has stopped by here before. And for those who wasn't here last year when he came, um, now you're privileged, you're blessed to be here today. God has brought him to minister to us at this time. He, is, he has pastored for 45 years. Amen. He's the former president of Allegheny West Conference. He is also a member, a former member of the Oakwood University Executive uh, Board there. And many other, many other boards and committees he has sat on throughout the division and throughout our conferences. He's currently serving as the president of the Regional Conference Retirement Fund, which is over $300 million right now. I think, and he'll give you the real numbers. I'm just giving you the numbers that I know. But um, <clears throat> what I found over and beyond all of that, he's a man of God. And any time a man of God is in the area, we need to hear a word from the Lord. You, you hear all this stuff from the news and all about this distraction that's going around, running for president. You'll get that in two weeks. But we have a word from the Lord today. And we know God is going to do something for us. I don't know about you, uh, but after this week that I've had, I need to sit back and know that God is real and that God is still available and that God is still all powerful and that God still loves me in spite of what's going on. So today, after our praise team will have rendered our hymn of a meditation, the next voice you'll hear is that of Dr. William Cox. Pray for him and hear ye him. How many of you all believe that God loves you? How many of you all truly believe that God loves you? I was reading this week, I was reading over Lamentations, and Jeremiah said, This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It's because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Amen? Because his compassions fail not, mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. I love that verse. But the thing I love most about that verse is the first three words. This I recall. Sometimes we have to recall what God has done in our lives. Amen? Sometimes we have to remember where God brought us from. My grandma used to say, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I have been blessed. Anybody been blessed in the house today? This song is a recall. It was for you to remember. And so we invite you to remember what God has done in your life so that you can be assured that he loves you. You came in believing it, but I want you to be confident that he loves you. Amen.
but I was just sitting there thinking to myself. Psalms 146 begins with, Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 146 ends with, Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 147 begins with, Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 147 ends with, Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 148 begins with, Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 148 ends with, Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 149 begins with, Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 149 ends with, Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 150 begins with, Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is praise time. Praise time because God has been better than good. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Somebody can testify that God has been better than good. You don't hear what I'm saying. I'm saying that God has been better than good. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I was, Doc, I was at a service station minding my own business, pumping some gas in the car, and there was a young lady on the other side, and she was saying something, but I couldn't understand what she was saying. So I was bold enough to say, uh, are you talking to me? She said, no, but I'll tell you what I was saying. Well, what were you saying? She said, um, he's been my gas. I said, what? She said, he's been my gas. Got up Monday morning and my needle in my car was saying it was on empty. And all I did was say, Lord, would you please just let me get to work. Came off my job and got in my car and I said, Lord, would you just let me please get home. And I'm praising with her. She said, I got up Tuesday morning and my needle was still on empty. And I said, Lord, would you just let me get to work? After work, I said, Lord, please just let me get back home. And got up Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning and Thursday morning. And today I, I prayed the same prayer. Lord, can you just let me get to work? Well, I got paid today, and I'm putting some gas in the car because all week long, God has been my gas. Somebody is able to declare that God is able to do anything and everything. The Bible is true when it says that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything that you could uh, ever ask. So I just came by to praise the Lord. Don't know what you were praising him for, but I know that he's brought me through all of my trials and tribulations. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Lord. Somebody said if the Lord had not been on my side, where would I be? I want to thank my, my friend, your pastor, Pastor where for this friendship 
You don't know what it means. Maybe you do. But I know what it means to have people say one thing and then do something else. Know what it means to, the Bible says that the arm of flesh will fail you, but God never will. He's, he's been a, a friend and a, a confidant. There, there are some things that I've shared with him that nobody else knows about. And to this day, he has been a safe place to fight in. On Olive, you just don't know, or maybe you do, just how blessed you are to have this man of God. Shared the fact that I'm currently working in Huntsville, Alabama. They don't call me president, they call me executive director. I'm glad to see Dr. Burton this morning. She has come uh, to our office and made presentations that have made a difference in our office. Thank you. I want to just share a word with you. It will be a little different from how we have looked at passages of scripture in the past. As I am committed like never before to making it to heaven. What a tragedy it would be if on this earth earth and experience hell and then when Jesus comes who loves us experience hell I'm going to ask that you would just in honor and respect to the word stand at this time Turn in your Bibles to Revelation 18, 1 through 4. Revelation 18, 1 through 4. Here's what the inspired writer says. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven having the great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. The merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven crying, heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Loving Lord, not by might, nor by human power, do that which only you can do. 
take now the written word and transform it into the living, breathing, spoken word. And we will give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to be there. I want you to repeat that with me. I just want to be there. In every age, the devil has used any number of sophisticated weaponry in order to over um, humankind. Almost 6,000 years of practice has shown him that some weapons are more effective than others. Today as I look into the arsenal of the devil's ammunition dump, I can see that some of his most effective weapons have to do with our emotions. Weapons like discouragement. Weapons like despondency. Weapons like hopelessness and weapons like depression. One of the most used of these emotional weapons is depression. Depression, as defined by psychiatrists, is a condition of general emotional dejection and withdrawal. It is sadness that is greater and more prolonged than that warranted by any objective reason. And when I look at the world today, I have no problem realizing that for many Depression has become a way of life. Everywhere you look, you can find depression. Wives are depressed. Husbands are depressed. Y'all going to talk to me? Young folk are depressed. Older young folk are depressed. Church members are depressed. Church officers are depressed. And if the truth be told, even pastors become depressed. Men and women today are almost at the end of their rope, and the question is being asked, is there any hope? Is there any light at the end of the rainbow? How can I survive the crisis of the moment? Airplanes taking off and losing vital parts as they go into the sky, shooting taking place where our children have to go to school, random shootings even in churches. COVID pandemic had an impact upon our health and our ideology, our attitude. What is coming next? global warming so that weather patterns are unstable, earthquakes and tsunamis taking place. There is an answer to the challenges that we often face. And that answer is found in the Bible. A recent survey showed that the book of Revelation is the hardest book in the Bible to understand. 
some, you might be interested in knowing that the second hardest book came in as Song of Solomon because of its sexual content. Revelation, I hope y'all are going to talk to me today. Re Revelation is a composite of 65 of the 65 books that were written before it came into being. It talks about the great controversy and the reality that in this life you're going to experience trials and difficulties. The fact of the matter after Adam and Eve sinned something came into existence that now threatens all of us, and that is sin. The resolution to the great controversy has the added blessing of moving sinful mankind from time back into eternity. And I've often wondered why is it that the last Book, the book of Revelation becomes so important to us and to a generation that is facing such difficulty. Well, it's simple. John experienced depression. What? John was the last one of the remaining original 12 disciples. John had been tried to, the devil had tried to, to kill him, but he failed. So he put him out on a rock to isolate him from all that he loved and from those that loved him. I'm almost afraid to ask the question. Has anybody in here ever been lonely? You can literally be in a crowd of people and feel all by yourself. And it appears that John is experiencing this kind of loneliness on the Isle of Patmos when Jesus shows up. Okay, you're not getting it. Listen, listen, listen. listen. May I just remind you that there is no mountain that is so high that God can't climb. There is no valley that is so deep that God cannot reach down into it. Would you understand and would you agree if I, I asked David to come and just take the mic, David? Can you say a word to your people today? He said, I'm glad to do that. Here's my word. Whether shall I flee from thy spirit? Whether shall I go from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, behold, thou art there. If I make my bed in the ground, behold, uh, thou art there. If I should take the wings of the morning and dwell in the most other parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely darkness uh, shall cover me, no, because the darkness and the light are both alike to thee. The old saints just simply say that if you're having trouble, call him up. Tell him what you want. No matter what situation or circumstance you're facing, the old saints would just say just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right. Revelation 1 verse 3 says that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So Jesus shows up and to make sure that John is clear, 
that it is him, he says in Revelation 1, 17 and 18, Fear not, fear not, I am the first and the last, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and just in case you don't know it, I, I have the keys of uh, hell and of death. Uh, John is going to be all right. I'm in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, and I am with you. I am uh, with my church. Jesus begins to give uh, a historical walk of what is going to happen in the church. He gives us the history of the church and what it was going to go through. So Ephesus is going to be your first love. Samaria is going to, Smyrna uh, is going to go through a period of persecution if you missed Sabbath school this morning you missed a blessing because we talked about the reality that everybody has issues and you go through trouble you may not understand it you may be ignorant of the fact that what you are going through is not just for you but for somebody else how many know that when you become a Christian, you give God license to use you in any way he sees fit? Some are going to die for the Lord and others are going to go through rough times for the Lord. Job had no idea that his trouble was because God was bragging on him. Oh, come on now. You do remember the story. Um, the law says, have you considered my servant Job? And the devil basically said, no, I put him off my radar because you have this fence around him and I can't get to him. So I've moved on to better pray. But if you take that fence down, He'll curse you to your face and God says, no, 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 Satan. You don't know Job the way I do. You don't know whether or not that trial, that difficulty that you are facing is actually God about to do something, something special for you. Oh, you don't believe it. Come here, Lazarus. Come here, Lazarus. Um, Mary and Martha sends this uh, message to the Lord. The one whom thou loveth is sick. They didn't even have to sign his name. Lazarus and Jesus were so tight that all they needed to say was the one whom thou love is sick. Lazarus was known in his town Bethany, but now Lazarus is known around the world because he died. And if Jesus had been here, my brother would not have died, but if he hadn't gone through what he went through, he wouldn't be a household name. You can't tell how your circumstances going to end up. Pergamos had to deal with compromise. Thyatira had to deal with uh, apostasy. Sardis had to deal with the uh, Reformation. Philadelphia had to deal with uh, brotherly love and Laodicea the church that we are now the time that is referenced in scripture concerning the church it's lukewarm they thought they had everything they had the truth 
they had the spirit of prophecy. Why y'all looking at me like that? <laughs> they had everything that made them the remnant. Regardless to where you are in your spiritual journey, because the seven churches gives us insight to our personal journeys, the answer to where you are is simply this. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. As I travel around, there are individuals that have become so frustrated and distraught about stuff that's going on in the church. They are losing their grip on God. And I've had individuals say, man, too much mess in the church. Well, here is the truth. Mess didn't start in the church. Mess started in heaven. Why, why is it that when sin shows up, we are surprised that mess started? Okay, okay, okay. In any any anybody would like to be in the church that Jesus was personally a part of? Well, let me tell you what Jesus had to deal with. Jesus had to deal with uh, who wanted to be leaders in the church. Uh huh. John said, Lord, uh, 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 I want to be on your right hand side. And James said, Lord, I want to be on your left hand side. They ain't even got their mama involved in this thing. <laughs> Talking to Jesus, when, when you come into your kingdom, will you put my sons on either side of you? And Jesus said, man, you don't know what you're asking for like some pastors I know wanted to go into ministry because they thought it was going to lift them up to a certain standard and Jesus said you don't even know what you're asking for you see when I come to my kingdom it's going to be on the cross because I came to die for the salvation of mankind which cross you want one on the left, left, or the one on the right. Jesus had money problems in his church. Oh, see? Yeah. Jesus was at Simon's house, and Mary came in with a, some very, uh, uh, some perfume that was very expensive. And the treasurer of the church said, I don't like the way the money is being spent. You could have sold this perfume for 200 pennies worth and look at all of the people you could help. Jesus' church was not absent of conflict. Let me tell you what I have learned. Sometimes conflict is for your growth. Sometimes you just need to have folk to lie on you. If God was lied on, why do you feel you are immune from being lied on? Uh-huh. You, you need to have some enemies in the church that are not converted yet so you can learn how to pray for your enemies. Why y'all looking at me like that? Uh-huh. Sometimes 
I know it doesn't happen here, but sometimes you need a pastor that you just can't get along with. Oh my. I said, oh my. Uh-huh. So you can learn how to pray for the ministry. Enough of that. The last time I was here, I, I talked to you about the first angel and, and the, the reality of the fact that we have the everlasting gospel just to quickly do a run through in reference to it. Here is the everlasting gospel in cleft note perspective. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 5, 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 8, but God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I was just touched this morning when it was said, God's not mad with you. God's not angry. Is you? God loves you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God loves you. And if you're a Christian, you can also say, so do I. That's the everlasting gospel. It is justification by faith. It is the process of me being credited with righteousness before I start doing what is right. Okay, you missed it. Let me try it over here. Justification is the process of me being credited with righteousness before I start doing what is right. Why is that important? Because God has eliminated every barrier to you coming to him just the way you are. All the good news of the gospel is that God has looked beyond your faults and now sees your need and provides a way of escape. You mean just, you, you, you just don't know me. And Jesus says, liar, come. Thief, Come. I know you have some biases out there. Homosexual? Come. Come just the way you are. And I will embrace you because I love you. Justification begins. Somebody say, just get started. Justification begins the process, and that which follows justification is sanctification. Well, what does sanctification mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Sanctification is the process of me becoming what God has already credited me with being. So I come a liar. And through sanctification, I start telling the truth. I come as a thief through sanctification. I begin to stop stealing. Oh, why y'all looking at me like that? Every, 
element of our life has to be under the control of the Spirit of God. And God says, listen, I'm going to work in you. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to fix the problem. God says, that which I have begun in you, I'm going to complete it. Brings us a knowledge and a commitment to the truth. Glorification is the process of God putting us beyond the consequence of sin. The process of salvation is a three-pronged process. I am saved. I am being saved. I will be saved. Our text, Babylon, is fallen, is fallen. What is interesting is that fallen is fallen is what the Greeks refer to, what the Greek refers to as the prophetic perfect. It shares events that have not yet taken place but will occur. Okay, did you get it? Prophetic perfect tells me that what the end will ultimately be. If you talk to many individuals, they struggle with that concept. Our forefathers didn't struggle with that concept. They actually live that concept through hope. You hear it in the music that they sung. Imagine being out in a muddy field and not having any shoes on their feet. Walking around and the mud is coming up through their toes and somebody starts saying, I got shoes. You got shoes. All of God's children got shoes. And individuals say, well, what are they talking about? They don't have any shoes on their feet, but they wouldn't stop the song there. They say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my shoes. I'm going to walk all over God's heaven. No shoes now, but when I get to heaven. Oh, bless his holy name. How many know that life is going to be a whole lot different when I get to heaven? Oh, come on. Now. I said, how many really understand that life is going to be a whole lot different when I get to heaven? Individuals have tried to mean, tried to get individuals to say, well, that's just pie in the sky. Well... I'm thankful for John because he tells us what heaven is going to be like. He tells us that uh, the streets are going to be made with pure gold. Do you ever imagine in your mind what that is going to be like? When you get to heaven, you're not, have, you're not going to have to worry about uh, what you're going to eat because there's a tree that bears 12 manners of fruit and the leaves are for the healing of the nation. When you get to heaven, you can run and not be weary. You can walk and not faint. The other morning, uh, my alarm clock went off and I jumped up and I realized that I wasn't 17 anymore. I reached over to grab my glasses because uh, there was a time that I didn't have to wear glasses. There was a time I, I was talking to a sister over in that corner right there where she says, oh, I remember you from Oakwood. Well, if she remembered me from Oakwood, then there was a time that I had an afro that was 18 inches long. My hair was brown. You can tell that some changes. 
have taken place. Oh, but when I get to heaven, I'm not going to experience the loneliness of loved ones that have already passed while down here. Now I've said all of that. Bring focus to this last thing, this idea of Babylon. Babylon is a system to me. Babylon is a system that the devil has created to bring attention to worshiping him versus worshiping God. Because we as a church have identified Babylon as a system, we lose the perspective that Babylon is not just a place, it is an attitude. So I'm going to need to talk about that just a little bit more. I was pastoring a a church on the West Coast, and uh, (laughs) um, in the evening, AY uh, service, um, the AY leader got up and and, uh, said, our activity for tonight is we're going to the movies. And of course, I said, we don't go to movies. <laughs> and the AY leader said, yes, we do. <laughs> and individuals, in the way it was shared with me when I was a little guy coming up in church school. I remember the first time I went to the movies to see Bruce Lee into the dragon. <laughs> Y'all want me to rush through this or just tell you like it is? All right. I'm sitting there watching Bruce Lee jump up into trees and fight individuals and I'm thinking, Lord, please don't come now, (laughs) because if you come now, I know I'm lost. Because I I was told that the angels stood on the outside. Why are y'all looking at me like that? (laughs) Acting like I was the only one that was told this to. And the, the angels don't go into the... Uh, that kind of environment. And then when I got a little old, I said, now wait a minute. If I ever get on the devil's ground, does that mean that the Lord isn't protecting me? I've been on the devil's grounds too much. Why y'all looking at me like that? And it clicked. It's not just environment. It has to do with one's attitude. So the devil wiped out the issue of environment. HBO. Come on now, don't play with me. Huh? Showtime. Huh? Huh? Internet, okay, so that I no longer have the excuse of environment. But Babylon is more than just environment. 
It has to do with the impact Babylon has on our attitude. Do I really take God at his word? Do I put myself in a position where I am giving in to Babylon's thoughts? Hey, Peter, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, is walking about. Seeking whom he can, no, he may devour. Anybody know the difference between may and can? Can denotes authority while may seeks permission. So when I give authority to my mind to do things that are contrary to God's desire for my life, I give the devil permission to maneuver my attitude. And it becomes Babylon. I want to shock your pure minds. Just a few more moments. I want to shock your pure minds. There are people that are saved in Babylon. They're living in a state of incomplete knowledge. But what they do know is that God loves them and they are happy for what he has done for them. They pray every day. They study the word every day. They treat people with kindness and respect every day. They keep their word when given. They visit the sick. They speak words of encouragement. They are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. They just don't know all of the truth that you have yet. 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 We have more knowledge, but it is not reflected in our behavior. We have more, tr we had the health message before the rest of the world had a clue. And we just fooled around with it and fooled around with it until the world now has become health conscious. And individuals are talking about having a plant-free diet. God gave it to us, but we let our own appetite fight again. Why y'all mad at me? I'm sorry, Brother Pastor, you told me to preach the truth. If the truth be told, some of our behavior makes it hard for saved folks to stay in our church. The Bible says that Babylon makes us drunk. I'm not going to ask anybody to go back into their past and talk about what life was like. But if you know what I'm about to say is true, don't say, Ben, just kind of put your hand up or something, okay? <laughs> Have you ever been drunk? Y'all been saved all y'all lives. Have you ever been drunk? All right? 
When you get drunk, listen, when you get drunk, the effects of drunkenness is not based upon environment. If you're drunk at the bar, somebody is kind enough to get you safely home. While you were at the bar, the room was spinning. When you get home, it's still spinning. Your environment did not have an impact upon what was now inside of you. So you can be Drunk as drunk can be, pretending to keep the Sabbath. You can be vegan and be drunk. You can be Bible toting, spirit of prophecy quoting, and as drunk as a skunk with your attitude. We talk down on ladies in the church getting pregnant out of wedlock and don't say anything to that person who is a gossiper. You can want to throw the book at individuals that have been caught in open sin, but we let people act out in church, in board meetings, in business meetings. Why y'all looking at me like this? And don't say a word about it because Babylon is an attitude. I'm going to read. Okay. I'm looking at the time and I'm late. Okay. Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect. Philippians 2.13, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I shiver every time I read this text. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8, and 8 through 10, and then shall the wicked be revealed. The Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the workings of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Because they received not the love of the truth they might save. I can get the musicians just to play past me, not old General Satan, Barry. I made up my mind. Church for many has just become a point of entertainment. Do we get our shout on today? Clap our hands, did we? Wave our hands, did we? Run. So whether or not church was good or bad just depends upon how we were made to feel. 
But if you, you don't select your doctors like that. You don't select your dentist like that. You don't select your policemen. You want church to be like that. Don't you really want to know the truth? If you ask any individuals, listen, Jesus is soon to come. Do you think that when Jesus comes, all of a sudden our characters change? I said it in cyber school this morning. Maybe the reason why evangelism is not as powerful as it once was. Nobody wants what you have if what you have isn't working for you. Do you have a sense of peace in your own life? When trouble and difficulty comes, do you act like individuals who don't have the Spirit of God working in their lives? Are you forgiving? Are you understanding? I wanted to jump up and shout while the baby blessing was taking place as the pastor talked about how kids wish their parents were. Because that's what God wants for us. He said, I didn't come to condemn the world. I came so that the world through me might be saved. Well, how will we know that we are like you, Lord? It's in the Sabbath school lesson. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one for another. I've just made up in my mind. I just got to be there. I done gone through so much stuff down here. I just got to be there. I don't care if I'm the last one there before those gates close. I just want to be there. I was coming back for a meeting with youngest son who was going to be playing in a, a basketball game. He was finally starting. And he said, you going to be there, Dad? Yes, yeah, son, I'm going to be there. The appointment that I had out of town went longer than I had anticipated. Because I fly generally on Southwest because I'm in the South, I'm thinking that all airplanes, companies, will do what Southwest does. You know, if you a uh, special uh, passenger, if you're on their A1 list, if it's the same day, they'll let you take another, the next flight out and get you to your location. They didn't have another flight out. So I had to go to another carrier. Get to the carrier. Guy told me this exorbitant amount of money that I was going to have to pay to get on this flight. And I'm thinking, 
I promised my son I was going to be there. But I can't make it unless I take this flight. Pulled out my wallet, gave him a credit card, paid for the flight. Last seat on the plane. I'm getting on the plane and I'm walking class past first class. I'm walking past business class. I'm all the way in the back of the plane in the economy section. But I was just happy to be on the plane. In first class they had China. They had silverware. They were serving some kind of steak. In business class, they had the next step down. By the time they got to me, I had chips and a little plastic cup. But I wasn't upset. I was on the plane. When the plane landed, first class got off. Business class got off. Finally, the account, economy class got off. That's where I was. But I was just as happy to be there because it enabled me to keep a promise that I had made to my son. I'm wondering to myself, how committed am I to keep this promise that I've made to the Lord? We like to say that sin is identified by the law, and it is. But the Bible also says that sin is identified by any unrighteousness. I'm thankful that I serve a God that loves me and wants to do best for me. I'm committed to doing whatever the Holy Spirit makes known in my life that will draw me closer to Him. Praise team. Things just pass me not, oh gentle Savior. With the permission of the pastor of the church, I want to open the doors of the church. That man, that woman, that boy, that girl who wants to say today, I just want to be there. No matter what it costs, no matter what it takes, I'm clear. God loves me. He desires me to be there with him. If that's your desire, would you just raise your hand right where you are? God bless you. Your hands. Nothing worth missing heaven over. If I got to get up, give up a relationship that God is not pleased with, I'm going to do that. If I'm going to forgive that person that has done me wrong, I'm going to do that. If I'm going to be faithful, my pledges to God. I'm going to do that. While God says, come just the way you are, we come with the intent of God growing us in our lives. 
your day, your moment. making that commitment today. You may not be a member of this church, but you want a church family. That's not perfect, but a church family that will love you, that will walk with you through your relationship with Jesus. If that's your desire, I'm going to ask you, if you were willing to raise your hand, two categories, maybe you want to become a part of this church fellowship, maybe you need special prayer because if the Holy Spirit has been talking, you have recognized in your own life things that need to change. We're going to pray in just a moment. But I'm going to ask you if you would come in, join me up front. I'm going to ask the pastor if he would pray for us. The individuals that says today is the day. This is my moment. I'm going to go all the way with Christ. Is that your desire? Would you come and join me up front? never be easier than it is right now. Come just as you are. But God is able to turn your life around. Man, woman, boy, girl. Surrender is only a victory word in the Christian vernacular because we surrender our lives to God. Won't you come? Won't you come? Whom have I on earth besides? Whom in heaven but me? to thee for your grace and your mercy that you have extended towards us and while we were yet sinners while we are yet sinners Christ has died Christ died for us that we could have everlasting life we've heard your word today we've come to your house today we've been blessed by your spirit we've been blessed by your love and and by your presence in this building and we pray today heavenly father uh, that you would be with us in a very real and special way as we differ in face we differ in need we all stand in need of something from you that's why we're here this is the house of blessing this is where you come to get your soul saved and to get things right and my prayer is that before that person that special person that the Spirit has been urging and speaking to right now before they leave this holy place that they will pull one of an elder or myself or pastor cost to the side and say today I've decided to make Jesus my choice we thank you for the fact that even though this world is upside down we serve a God who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Yes. And even though the storms are raging, 
and the billows are tossing and we see events and challenges before us, we know in whom we have believed and his promises are that in spite of what's going on, he's still in control. So we thank you for that. We thank you for being with us today. We thank you for hearing this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Can you put your hands together for the man of God, for God using him today in a very real and a very special way. I just want to be there. Can you say that to your neighbor? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Be there. I don't know what number I will have, but I know I'll have a number and I just want to be there. Amen. 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 We thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for sharing that message of hope with us today. Now, as we play it, as we leave, please remember uh, our six o'clock meeting parents and Pathfinder directors. And you know, I, someone slipped in on me today and she didn't think I saw her, but she came in from Panama. Where's Grace? You didn't think I saw you. There you are. Yeah, stand up so the church can see our, this is our former head deaconess. She's all the way from Panama here today with us visiting with us praise the lord praise the lord now as we close our service day i know you're not ready to go home i know we got a few more songs we can sing scriptures we can read but i want you to but i want you to look at your neighbor just in case and say neighbor embrace the promise now look at the other one and say what's the promise that you're the head and not the tail that you're above and not beneath that God is on your side and that this week this week is going to be a week of miracles for you this week is going to be a week of breakthrough for you this week is going to be a week of overcoming for you claim it is yours in Jesus name God bless you now look at the neighbor and neighbor next week next week next week I want to see you here it may be the same seat but it'll be the same church the same pew, the same pastor, say, show you right, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Will you close this out? Amen, amen, amen. Hey, show you right, all right. Amen. Let's give the man of God a, a round of applause. Thank you so much for this sermon today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Let us look to the Lord and be dismissed. Dear Lord, we thank you for what we witnessed today in this house. And we thank you, Lord, for um, bringing us together. It was good for this short time. And now, Lord, as we um, enjoy the rest of this wonderful Sabbath day, I pray, God, for the blessing to be upon every family. I ask, dear Lord, that you would be with us as we venture into another week. And I pray, dear God, in this short time that we've spent together, that it will be a reflection and Hopefully, dear Lord, it will light a candle of hope um, in our lives as we go through our challenges for the, for the work week. I pray, God, that you would go before us. Lift us up, dear God. Keep us encouraged. Keep us uplifted. And I pray, dear Lord, for those who are viewing us today by internet, I pray, God, that you would be with those who decided to stream and to share with us. I pray, God, blessings upon them. And now, dear Lord, be with us. Take care of us. And bring us back again. Of course, in Jesus' name, we thank you for all these things. We say, amen. It was a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. That was a good word. Very timely. But did you guys know you were in the prayer room? You're supposed to cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. So we're going to leave you with some encouragement that this is the prayer room. You can write up all your prescriptions right here in the prayer room.